What's up, guys? Welcome to Straight From The Chest. My name is Justin Grodd and I'm your host on this personal development podcast. Guys, if you are new to the channel, this is a podcast in which I try my best to give you some, some formidable positions of, of thought to be able to extract what it is that you have that's an innate ability that you have probably lying dormant or suppressed. And that's my goal with this podcast. So again, if you're new, that's the, that's the thesis of this podcast and what it's about. And if you're, if you're an, an old listener, guys, you know that I just so appreciate you and your, and your listening ear and, and the fact that you give me your time. It means a lot to me. Guys, it is hot as shit. Why is it so hot all of a sudden? Just hot, man. Like, and it's not even really that hot. It's just, we're so used to like a 65, 70 degree weather. It, it just, maybe even 70s, like kind of, kind of getting warm, but I feel like maybe 50s, 60s, that's, that's where we're normally uh, used to. But now it's like, it jumps up to like 80, 85, 90. And we're like just boiling, man. And it, it definitely brings out the uh, satanic side of me, <laughs> but I swear I just I can't stand the heat. I'm not one for the heat. Um, I know a lot of people are the same way, and other people thrive in the heat. Isn't that in that weird? Because some that are so used to something, it's it's like it's it's regular to them. Like we're used to 60s, you know, 65, even in the 50s, and that's like a fairly good temperature for us to function. And then we get up to like the 80s and we're just like, we think it's just, you know, we're next to a heat lamp all day. But I, I, I'm i not one for it. And uh, guys, I wanted, there was something that I was thinking, this is totally off topic, but that's what I hit you with because that's just the way that I am. My brain is just, just all up and down. But there's something that I was really, really, really relishing the other day. And it's to be honest with you, it's something that keeps me from, from actually delivering the best quality to you. And the reason why I say best quality is because to me, what's the best quality is what I can deliver to you that's authentic and transparent. That's the best quality to me. Not being able to say the right things, but being able to say the things that resonate the most with you and able you to, to find a familiarity or similarity within me. And that helps to obviously resonate an action within you. That's what being my best is all about. And really, I can't do that if I'm not 100% me. And I know that sounds cliche to say, like, you know, oh, you know, you're 100%, be you, be you, dude. I mean, that's not what I'm trying to say, although it is. You need to express, what I'm trying to say is you need to express everything that's in you. And to be honest with you, man, if I had a tombstone that, that read one message, I'd want it to say this. You suck at being anybody else. Instead, be everything and express everything that you're embodied. No, let me rephrase that. Let, let me rephrase that. I want, to, I, want to, I want this to sound good. Let me rephrase that. You suck at playing anybody else. Instead, express everything that you are because you're great at that shit. And that really resonates with me and that centers me. It may sound like a, like a, like a, a frivolous statement, but in reality, I would really want that on my tombstone if I had to pick any message because that embodies who I am. It's real, it's raw, and it's simple because really, if you think about it, how many times do you live exactly in your identity? And it's really, really rare that we see that. You know, and with times that we do see it, we think that person's possessed or they're just going down the wrong road or whatever, or they're so, they're so off, off putting, we can't really conceptualize or receive what they're saying. And I think the opposite. I think that there's a reason why that person is that way. And it's not because of any mental disturbances more often than not. It's because they've actually honed in on their own identity and they're just braver than you are. They're just braver than I am. And their ability to capitalize on that goes with the I don't give a shit attitude and not to the point where it's disrespectful to other people, but they're in their lane and it actually, it actually is, it seems like they're in multiple people's lanes, but they're really not. They're doing their own thing 
and they're saying and vocalizing and being about. That's what it is. That's what it really centers around. Expressing exactly who you are and not deviating from that. And that's very hard to do in this day. It's so hard to do when you want to be accepted. And I get it. But if you if you had the choice, which one would you choose? And most of you would say, I guarantee most of you would, that are listening would, would, are thinking or not, if not saying it out loud, well, I would be me. Are you really? Would you really be you? Would you really? Because what that, what that entails is you being different. What that entails is you being, you know, quote unquote, cut from a different cloth. Are you ready to accept that type of a direction? Are you ready to accept that type of a, of a, of a calling? I don't think so. I think that if you were, you've already started to do it by now. But if this is the first time you're hearing it, and this is the first time that you're actually con conceptualizing it, then I'd hope you choose to be your own. But more often than not, you're gonna say it, but you're gonna do the exact opposite. And you think you're being you because you're living in your own shoes every day. Well, no shit, we all are. But are you really coming out in who you are and, and, and actually embodying who you are with that. And that means anything. That could mean, I feel this way on this topic. I don't really agree with you, bro. I don't really agree with that. I think that it's this, this, that, and the other. And I'm not saying it for argumentative sake. I'm just saying it. Are you going to choose bravery over acceptance? Because that's so, that's, there's such a, a, a fine line between the two. And more often than not, it's easy to go down the acceptance route and rationalize it as it's who you are or your identity. And more often than not, people do that instead. They rationalize a concept that is accepted, well accepted. They just rationalize it within their own right or justify it to themselves as that's how they think. Is it really how you think? And I'm not saying that you should go out and start controversy but I'm saying, stand up for the shit you believe in. I'm saying, be expressive of the things that you believe inherently on. Don't go with the grouping. Don't go with just the acceptance, you know, the acceptance uh, crowd just because you're going to be accepted. Like that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't leave a mark. It's not going to leave any formidable footprint on this planet. But it's up to you. you and do what you want. That's the reason why I do this pod. It's one of the reasons why I do this podcast. Because it gets me out of my comfort zone. Mo most of you like that. Most of you, maybe mo many of you don't like that. Like, maybe many of you don't like the shit that I say. Doesn't matter though. Because I'm going to keep coming on here twice a week and I'm going to deliver this shit to you. Because it's the way that I feel. And in, the, and in the process, you'll get accolades. In the process, you'll get critiques. That's just life. You're going to get that if you're neutral. So you might as well go out and get critiques and accolades on things that you believe in and, and actually expressions that are your identity. But most of you just don't have that bravery in you. And it's not that you're weak, it's that you're just a coward. And there's something about being, there's something about being a human being that we're called to stand together, but also stand apart for things that showcase a visceral expression of who we are. And when you don't do those things and you try to emulate somebody else and justify it as is you, <laughs> you're already putting on the wrong clothes. And I know it feels like it's okay to do that because everybody else is, but you're diluting yourself in the process. And God never called each and every one of us to be a blender. But we're so, we're so fashioned to want to form groups that accept the same rationale in every notion that we lose ourselves in the process. I mean, if that were the case, we wouldn't have an Eminem. If that were the case, we wouldn't have a Kanye West. If that were the case, we wouldn't have so many people that 
even though the people that I just named off, they're artists of music. I mean, that's influential. You got to understand that. Even a Jay-Z, he didn't go with the crowd. He went with what he believed in. Let's scale it back. Beethoven. Beethoven didn't go with the crowd. His dad wanted him to, to, to write and, and uh, conduct his music in a certain way, and he just didn't feel it in his ear. He, it didn't resonate with him in his gut and in his, and in his eardrum when he heard it. it. He had to do it differently. And he single-handedly changed music in his day. If we didn't have somebody that was brave enough to go out and ex actually express the identity of who they are, we wouldn't have had a Beethoven. He would have, he would have been just Beethoven, but we wouldn't even remembered him. He wouldn't have set a legacy or a footprint. He wouldn't have made history. And the same goes for many, many, many influential founders of this, on this planet that are either here or, or gone. And I'm telling you that that, that, that comment is as, as dumb as you may think it is, it's so polarizing and powerful. Let me put it to you like this. If whenever I come out on this podcast, I have to actually tell myself that. Because if I try to go in here and placate, even though it's it's who I am, I try to placate because I want you to receive a certain type of message, all the while knowing I can't, I can't, I can't. Um, I can't hone in to each and every person with the style of my, with my voice. I can't. It's impossible. Not everybody's going to like it. And that's the real world. But it doesn't behoove me from doing it. What would behoove me is me not actually actuating on who I am and my identity and suppressing that for fear that I wouldn't be accepted by you when really it doesn't matter. It's all about what I'm, what I'm trying to extract out of my life. That's the whole goal of this. That's it. It doesn't have to do with you. And similarly, it doesn't have to be the people that you're trying to think you put on, that you're, you're trying your, to put on for. It doesn't have to be about them. I'm saying this is about you finding what you're great at and doing that shit. That's it. You keep placating, you keep, you keep, you know, basically suppressing and diluting who you are because you want to be accepted. And I talk about this a lot. I get it. I'm a broken record, but fuck it. You have to understand this. This is something that you have to put into practice in your life. If you don't, you'll get lost. And it's really easy to get lost right now with everything going on. You really, really, really need to say that to yourself every day. Say this. I suck at being anybody else. I suck at playing and acting like anybody else because I promise you, you can find somebody who you kind of mirror a little bit. If you really take a hold of that statement, you can find one person that you mirror a little bit. And instead, because you suck at playing anybody else and everybody else, instead, express everything that is you because you're great at that shit and you know you are. You may not be good at building a house, but you're great at composing music. You may not be good at talking softly, but you're great at being expressive and aggressive and passionate in the process. And you may not captivate everybody's ears, but to those that you do, you're moving. Do you see? Do you see what I'm speaking about? It doesn't mean that your avenue is going to be the best or most equipped for everybody, for the masses. But that's not what it's about. It's about honing in on everything that you're great at. And that really signifies around you being 1000% you. Can you do that though? That's the question. Can you be critique? Can you be critiqued by your mom, by your dad, by your sister, by your brother? Can you not get accolades from those people that you think it's, it's automatic from and still keep going? Can you get put down but still extract what it is that's inside of you? Because if you didn't, it would be, it would be, a, it would be a catastrophe on your own internal end. 
You couldn't even fathom waking up every day and not being who you are, not expressing who you are, because you would be suppressing and silencing the one voice that you have or the one, the one calling that you were brought to be on this planet. And I don't know about you, but that keeps me up at night. That. Not bills, even though that might too. Not relationships, even though that might too. Not where I'm going or where I'm headed, even though that might too. Because it's all predicated on if I can actually hone in on the central focus, which is being and extracting my true and raw identity and fuck everything else. I'm sorry to cuss so much, but sometimes I like to curse to get my point across because sometimes I feel like it's within merit. And I don't know, you may be saying, Justin, you're Christian, or you just shouldn't be cussing. You know what? We all got something. You may not curse, but you do something else. You may smoke a bunch of weed. You may drink a bunch of alcohol. You may do something that I don't do, but we all have something. So that's the kind of Christian that I am. I never said I was perfect. And if you don't want to listen to me as a byproduct, I understand. But at least you got this far in the message. And hopefully what I got with you with this far in the message, it actually resonated because that's exactly what I, what I, wanted, what I wanted you to hear was everything preceding the F-bomb or everything preceding the curse words. You got it. Now, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to consider yourself to be a brave individual and actuate on the principles of being brave? Or are you just going to succumb to whatever it is that is acceptable and dilute your identity? And every day you wake up, it should always be a question because you do have the question. You have the choice, rather. The choice is... Do I want to emulate and mirror somebody else because I know that's going to be maybe better accepted because it's proven to be accepted by that person that I'm emulating or mirroring? Or am I going to go 1,000% in on myself and extract whatever it is I have to extract because I know I'm going to be great at that? You really can't lose being yourself. You just can't. You can't lose being yourself. You can lose though trying to emulate somebody else. I promise you, I've lost for the last, I don't know, 30, 30 years trying to be me with the essence of something else. And that's me delivering transparency to you, even though as much as I don't want to say that, I've lost when I mean loss, I mean loss, loss within myself because I haven't been brave enough to capitalize on the actual identity that God entrusted me with for fear that it might not be accepted, man. And you can continue your life and even if you acquire things in the process based on your ability to mirror other people and maybe put a percentage of you in there in the process. You won't have a quality of life. You'll just have a life. But there's no quality of life when you're a human being mirroring another human being and going off of their blueprint. There's just not quality of life in my book. I, a lot of times get tired of workout programs that I do, even though I make them up, I sometimes just wanna do someone else's workout program because I'm tired of making my own stuff up. And so if I do do that because I wanna separate myself and get off my own obsessive compulsive, you know, exercise alignment, And it has, he, has, he has me do something that I don't want to do. I do it anyways because it's in the program. And I'm just now facilitating because it's in the program. And I'm doing the rep range and the, the exertion level that's in the program. And I start to not like it. And it starts to make me 
it starts to maybe deviate me a little bit in the way that I feel about the gym or the feel I way I feel about working out. And by the way, workouts my medicine. Exercising is my medicine. When I say exercise, I mean lifting weights, not walking, not riding a bike, not hiking. I mean lifting weights. That stress is a medicine to me. And when I'm not doing that, I'm deteriorating in my mind. And if I don't want to do the thing that gives me actually the most life, then I'm really not productive. And at that point, what's the quality like? I'm just facilitating. You know, I've respectfully gained the, uh, the amount of muscle mass that I'm going to gain from musculoskeletal stance naturally. So why am I working out right now and exerting myself in this way right now? It has to be for a bigger reason. It has to be for quality of life. Because that's, that's the marker now that I have to function on. And the same goes for your voice, same goes for your craft, your talent, your abilities. If you consistently mirror somebody else's when you're not good at that, and you justify to yourself, well, this person I look up to, and I, or he's my mentor, she's my mentor, and so I, I, know, that, I know that they, I, I trust the person that they are, they're a great person. You know, they're well-respected. They have, they have a lot of things to show for it. But see, what they did differently than you and what you're not putting into practice is that they went all in on who they are. That's the only thing that they did differently. And that's the reason why, that's really the reason why you want to emulate them because secretly you want to develop that type of bravery that they have. And that's the underlying component or constituent that you're not giving credit to. And instead, you think all this is surface. You think that this is what you got to do to get this and it's all surface derived. It's not. It has nothing to do with surface. It has everything to do with how well can you internally dig and extract what seeds God put inside of you. And then where you plant those seeds and you allow those seeds to grow and bloom and blossom. Are you brave enough to extract those? Or are you just going to do the minimum of what it takes to be accepted? Done.